And now on BBC One in the North East and Cumbria, here's Chris Jackson with Inside Out. Hello and welcome to the programme. Tonight, the treatment that could have cost a doctor his job, but gave his patients hope. To take my injection away would be to take my life away. We all know we should be eating a healthy, balanced diet, but one family doctor is hoping to convince the medical world to take a simple vitamin more seriously. He claims it could cure millions of people's ills and save the NHS a fortune. For the last 25 years, he's been looking into the remarkable recovery of his patients, but his methods nearly led to him being struck off. Immediately, like you pour water to a plant, which didn't receive any water while you're on holiday, you come back and pour some water. Next morning, it is up. Same way, the body reacts so much. Just like you drink water with, if you're thirsty. That dramatic is the beneficial effect of B12 treatment. And it has no harmful effects. The sketch from our daily food. If you don't eat meat, then you can get the B12 from fish. Or, if you're a vegetarian, at least you can get it from eggs and dairy products. It was the effect of a strict diet he'd observed in his early medical career that gave Dr Chandy his hunch. I had some experience with the Hindus of India when I practiced there. They used to come with these symptoms and when we did the B12 level, because they were vegetarians, naturally, lo and behold, they had B12 deficiency and it was such a simple treatment, we give the B12 tablets and they improved. Dr Chandy's hunch has led him to diagnose 700 of his patients with B12 deficiency, a 10% way above the national average. In Jeanette's case, chronic tiredness, tingling in the limbs and total hair loss. I can laugh about it now, but at the time it was just... Yeah, it was very... It was devastating. You didn't like to talk about it, neither did you? No. I used to be outgoing when I was at school and I really enjoyed life, but losing my hair... I didn't want to go out and I wasn't the person who I wanted to be. You wear a wig and I've actually worn this one to go to the door to talk to people and it actually results in tears. It is absolutely horrendous. I was told that I had alopecia and that my hair wouldn't necessarily come back. With B12, it returned. But for years she'd been reduced to living on antidepressants as a hermit in her own home. Her family forced her to see Dr Chandy. And the time I met Dr Chandy, I was carried to him through the back door. I never went voluntary. My husband made me go. He'd said, look, enough's enough. I don't want your antidepressants all your life. You need to see somebody else. But the NHS was beginning to worry the GP was experimenting on his patients. Dr Chandy's methods were unlikely to go unnoticed for very long. Local pharmacists had noted a rise in the amount of prescriptions for B12 and soon the authorities stepped in. The Primary Care Trust asked experts at Newcastle's Freeman Hospital to review what the GP was up to, as they thought his methods were unorthodox and could have an impact on patient safety. Now, if you came to me with tiredness and then I found your vitamin B12 was 300, I'd be very reluctant to say that the tiredness was due to B12 deficiency. And I think that's where we have to be cautious, especially if we run the risk of missing uh, another disorder from, from saying, oh, this must be vitamin B12 deficiency, and then missed a more serious disorder that perhaps required urgent treatment. After 40 years' service in the NHS, the GP wasn't going to give up easily. Over two and a half decades, he'd kept meticulous patient records to support his theory. But he was told to stop treating all but a few patients with B12 while they looked at his evidence. I was told if I don't stop, I may even lose my job. If I didn't have written evidence, I would have been struck off a long time ago. That period was uh, the worst time in my life. I was hurt for my patients and uh, also... Inadvertently, they were infringing on my clinical freedom as a doctor. For Jeanette, whose hair had slowly but fully returned, the intervention was devastating. Without B12, her hair fell out again. That was the most devastating part of my life, from having my hair thicken up with an injection, what was there for me to treat me. And it was took away from me, and I didn't know why at the time. And I was cursing my doctor. I was thinking, why has that doctor done this to me? Why has he given me a life and given me courage and then took it back away? 
B12 deficiency is normally diagnosed alongside signs of abnormalities in the formation of blood cells. But could Dr. Chandy be right? It causes other symptoms without affecting the blood. It's possible he's right, but at the moment, I think if you took a poll of doctors, they would mostly uh, say that he wasn't on for at least some of those patients. Is it acceptable for a GP to have a hunch and then try and take on the medical world? I think we should all question the perceived wisdom and the norms and uh, a lot of medical progress has been done by people who have done exactly that. So I think it's creditable that he's doing that. But uh, as with all these things, you have to uh, be careful to get it right. Other current research is hinting that the benefits of B12 are worth investigating. The Primary Care Trust is now happy to allow Dr Chandy's work to continue, but under stricter supervision. Back on the B12, Jeanette's hair has returned yet again. It's getting quite long as well, isn't it? It is. It's really long now. At one point you didn't even like the water spray on it, did you? No. The GP <laughs> argues this proves his case, so he's resisting calls to test his theory in a clinical trial, because that would mean some patients being given a placebo. I could never have my injection taken away from me. To take my injection away would be to take my life away. You feel that strongly about it? I do, really do, yes. The Maverick GP believes his 700 case studies should be enough, but he's hoping the NHS might be persuaded by doing the sums. It only costs £28 approximately uh, for a six months treatment, so it's very cheap. On the other hand, it will co co uh, cost about £200 for antidepressants for six months treatment, and it will have all the side effects of the uh, drugs they take. While this is such a clean, simple treatment, I think it is purely lack of awareness. I think the key is my patients. Not a single patient would say that I have done anything wrong. They will say I have only helped them and saved their families. I think it is not me, it is my patients the answer. Dr Chandy is due to publish his findings in medical journals shortly and you can see more on our website. Meantime, the local primary care trust is still urging him to subject his work to a full clinical study. Still to come tonight.